Speaking of quick sells, I got to tell you guys about Carvana. <laughs> Good intro. It I does not so. get quicker than this. So the first thing I did, because I was, okay, so just for some context, you guys, I sold my uh, 2015 Ford Escape. I've had it for about a year and a half. I'd say with my use, I've gotten about $3,000 worth of use out of it. And the way I personally calculate that is I value my car at $2,000 every year. So a year and a half is about $3,000 of worth to me. How many miles did you drive on it? I put about 18,000 miles on the car. So that's a right around 12,000 a year. Now, I bought it from a dealership, so I did have to pay some fees up front, but out the door at the dealership with the warranty I purchased for it as well, which I never ended up using, was right around $13,000. I after a year and a half of using it, I decided I wanted a truck, so I bought my coworker's truck and then I immediately threw the Escape on the market. So, the good news of that, especially with the time we're in, is that used cars are selling for so much. The unfortunate thing was I was so I was so optimistic. Guess what I listed it first for? 14, right? I listed it for $14,000, which would be absolutely insane. Like I have a $13,000 car, which is really I bought for let's say 115 because 1500 of that was just dealer fees and mm-hmm. you know tax um, and uh, warranty. So to list it for 14,000 which is 2500 above what the car was worth a year and a half ago was almost like greedy. Well, it didn't really go anywhere because I bumped it down to 13.5 a week later and then 13, 12, 5, 12. I bumped it. It didn't get much action for the first couple of weeks. And then it got, started getting a ton of action and I went on a couple test rides with some people, but really didn't get anybody to buy it. So here's where it all comes in. I listed it for 11.5 and I took somebody on a test drive. They didn't want the car for whatever reason. So I saw on Reddit a discussion between CarMax and Carvana. And there was a lot of people agreeing that, oh, Carvana pays so much more than CarMax. Why would you ever go to CarMax? And I'm not as familiar with Carvana as I am CarMax. I just know CarMax is the one with like a physical lot. There's one out on Atlantic and you can go and they'll basically give you a cash offer in the same day. Well, Carvana, I went on their website, filled out their appraisal form. And in the condition I said my car was, They appraised it for $11,700, which for me was insane because that's more than the eleven five I was currently listing it for on private market. So pretty much I just took a picture of my title, picture of the odometer, picture of my driver's license. You have to upload all that to Carvana's website as well as check if there's any problems like check boxes on their website. I certify, you know, to the best of my knowledge, there's no problems with this, this, this. Here's the condition my car is in. I got an appointment two days later, this dude with a Carvana truck pulled up to my house and right as he got out of the truck, he hands me the check. He didn't even open the car. I forgot that he came here. I thought he came here. Yeah. There's a Carvana in the city that we're in, but he didn't even like look at the car. He just handed me the check and he said, okay, you can go ahead and start signing paperwork. And I was like, okay, well, here's the keys. All he did, from what I could tell, was he just walked around the car, opened the doors, took some pictures of VIN numbers, other identifying numbers, and then I guess in general, just getting an idea if the car was like abandoned or smelled like shit or whatever the deal was. But two minutes later, I had everything signed. Um, He was in the car. Granted, his Carvana truck that he pulled up to my house already had another car on it. So I was, you know, naturally thinking, well, how's he going to take my car home if he's already coming back from a pickup with another person? And he told me, oh, yeah, we do this all the time. I'm just going to back your car up out into the street. And one of our third party uh, carriers is going to come and pick it up. So somebody just came and towed my car away later that night who I didn't see do it. But that was it. Wow. That was it. That was it. I have a check for that amount, the eleven thousand seven hundred. <laughs> yeah. Went the next day to the bank and cashed it, and I have no complaints. And it's that's honestly I wonder, such a simple process that that's why we're telling Aaron to sell his car. <laughs> so yeah, so at the gym, I actually look. I actually looked up. I'm not gonna do it. Obviously, I wouldn't have a car. I mean, 
Uh, but I ride your bike. I did, you on. know, just for fun. I went in on Carvana and uh, did the offer thing, and I bought. I think I bought the car for eighteen, and then, um, and then all of the the fees and stuff came out to nineteen, and they are offering seventeen thousand. I, I, oh, I'd, the mileage you said. Yeah, the mileage okay. I said. Um, but yeah, seventeen thousand. I mean, like, which is insane. I thought I would get you know twelve. How many years have you had the car for? Four. And sixty one thousand. Four years, and you put sixty one thousand miles on it. Yeah, and you bought it for what was the price? Well, I put I put fifteen thousand about a on, year. Uh, no, just in total. You put fifteen thousand. So miles bought on the it car, at forty five thousand, and it's now it's at sixty one. Have you had it for like three years or four years? Uh, I'm pretty sure four years. I got four it years. junior year. That's right, junior year. It's and a it's a 2015? 17. 2017. So I mean, like seventeen thousand. I'm not gonna do it, but that's pretty. That just tells you how how hot the car market. But here's the thing: like, used car market is. So. What's the price out the door you paid to the dealership? You said it was about nineteen. About nineteen. So let's say, just like we estimated for my car, you didn't buy a warranty, did you? No. I would say about fifteen hundred dollars of that nineteen is related to dealership expenses. Yeah. So the way I see it is, you got the car for seventeen five. Mm -hmm. when you bought the car you just had to pay some other like you know tangibles on the side yeah. that are non-negotiable aren't yeah. even related to the value of the car so really you bought yeah. the car for 17.5 used it four years i would say for any car a good rule of thumb is especially if it's already used like if it's a brand new car it doesn't depreciate by just two thousand dollars a year use it for four years that's eight thousand dollars of depreciation so technically by the standard i go by which I would say is reasonable, you only need to sell the car for $9,500 to come out breaking even. Now, it sounds like you don't drive a lot, though. No. So you I think may the, value a car less per year I think than the I only, do, Yeah, I think the only uh, driving I do is just going down to Tampa and then, you know, just, you know. That's just insanely stuff. low miles. Yeah. When but, uh, I brought my Corolla to the dealership, uh, last time I was getting oil changed, he said that I, he thinks that like the mileage in my car is like a new record. <laughs> I've seen. Twenty fifteen, I think it has almost one hundred and twenty thousand. One hundred and twenty thousand for twenty fifteen. So it's six years uh, old. Yeah, that's a lot of. So mileage. that's twenty k a year. Yeah, usually you only see that on like police cars. Yeah, I mean, my mom drives pretty far from work when she had it, and then, but like, I don't really. I mean, now I'm driving it a lot because I have to drive from Arlington to Riverside. What kind of car is it? Corolla. So wow, that's a dependable just, car just, right there. So get this, oh, yeah. my my Fucking mom awesome. back in 2014. Uh, I think she bought a tra Traverse. You know, had little mileage on it. I think like a total of like 3,500 or something. It has just passed my mileage, so 60. You know, I think 62,000. What year did she buy it? For 2014. Oh, 2014. Was that new? Yes, I think it was new. Ouch, she hurts. just passed. She just passed my mileage. Mileage. So like 60, 60 Yeah, I mean, five, just, I mean, like I'm assuming she she her she doesn't have to drive far. I mean, like she probably right? drives total her time to get to work is probably like five minutes, okay. ten minutes. Well, then good. there you have it. Twenty fourteen, <laughs> brand new. It's now it's year twenty twenty one. How many miles total on the car? I think like sixty five. So it's about eight eight thousand five hundred miles a year that's pretty low i think the average is thirteen thousand like yeah. nationwide yeah that's um insane now so, i'd i'd have, I have a theory wow. of why carvana can do that offer you that um that I'm price just aaron i have a feeling they make most of their money off of the dealer fees if um let's say let's say they bought it your car you know 11 11 7 I think yeah, eleven seven, eleven seven nine seven. Okay, uh, so they bought it for that, and then they're probably gonna sell it for thirteen on the lot, maybe. New and then dealer fees come out to be like fourteen, maybe. I don't know, but yeah, um, because they're they're probably gonna you know shine it up really nice. Yeah, if they do a lot of these types of things, which obviously they do. I mean, yeah. like they have their systems down pretty pretty good oh it's they give you seven days to just return a car yeah so that's insane like you can just go on the website have the car delivered to you use it for six days return it think no, about no, no expenses. do that every uh, week do it every week i mean <laughs> yeah it's 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 one of those things where um what do you what are these dealership fees is are they technically 
anything. And probably like wages. So like I would love to have on the podcast somebody that was a a car dealer. See, I think salesperson. I I think they have sneaky Dells. Yeah. So let's say uh, Nissan, the the brand Nissan. Okay, you have a dealer, but then you have the guy that make you know Nissan. I think the dealer pays you know for inventory of their cars for you know low price, and then they sell it. Nissan says, "All right, you're selling it for this amount." Why don't I just buy from Nissan then? <laughs> well, th- that's the whole point of dealers. So it's... Yeah, I know. It's like the whole point of everything, right? Yeah. Wish I could just wholesale everything. <laughs> like cut out it, the middle, man. Isn't Nissan, Nissan is a... Uh, yeah, all car places know, are I franchises, know. right? Except yeah. Tesla, right? Maybe, yeah. There's no dealerships I'm that sell Teslas. That aren't Tesla Tesla, Tesla just ships their cars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a Which Tesla... Funny, but... There's one in... I mean, obviously they don't have a lot of cars. And but Carvana is... Dude. St. John's Town Center is one. Have you seen the Carvana place in St. Augustine where they have, like, a stack of cars? There, there's one here, too. Oh, really? Is it, it a might vending, be Jackson, vending machine maybe. type style? Yeah, yeah it's like They a have stack. one off the uh, 95 Butler... That, um, might be, that might be what I'm, I'm, I'm referring to. It could be, yeah. It's right over there yeah, by my I work. Remember. I see that all the time. Yeah, so... I, I think to add to your point, Aaron, there's definitely going to be dealer fees and then... Carvana can charge more just because by virtue of people trust Carvana. People know there's no risk with buying with Carvana. Yeah. Um, but also the financing, like that's that's that, probably a big actually, I think that's probably a and bigger part of it. Warranties also. Too. And I'm trying to get some numbers for you guys because um and I made this mistake. So like one time when I was going to buy, when I was going to buy the escape, I made the mistake of walking on the lot and saying I'm paying cash. I don't know oh, why I told. Yeah. I don't know why I told them that, but I, I, it was almost like in my mind, like, "Hey, don't don't show me a car that's more than eleven thousand dollars because I literally have eleven thousand dollars in cash. It's not how they I'm not open to accepting additional, you know, aid. And that was the biggest mistake of my life because what I came to find out, I was looking at this Ford Explorer, which I originally wanted, and I sat down and almost as if I was going to buy the car, and he said, "I'll sell it to you for eleven thousand if." You finance with us only for six months, and then you can pay the balance in full on that 181st day. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. He's like, dude, you're not going to pay much interest. I get you have the Dave Ramsey mentality, but (laughs) he said that. He said that. I'm not even kidding. He said that. But we can't cut you this financing deal. We can't cut you this sweet deal unless you finance with us. And that's when it clicked. They get money just for financing, and that's just that's not revenue. That's profit. Mm-hmm. They might make a thousand dollars total on the vehicle. So just by virtue of them financing the vehicle, they made they doubled their profit. So they can afford to take a thousand dollars off of the vehicle if it means you're going to finance with them six months. So is, is there like a clause that you have to keep an it early for six payout months? fee? So I could theoretically pay. Yeah, it's called an early payout. Um, fine, and they have that for houses too. Like if I paid my mortgage off in three years, I'm getting a big fine. Yeah. Um, but for the, that's why he told me that six months number. I think that's the quickest you can pay it off without incurring like a pretty sizable fee. Mm-hmm. But just by financing through the dealership, and assuming they're not, which some of them do, they'll add a little bit of a percent on top of what the credit union's charging that dealership. Sometimes they'll just hand over the loan straight to the credit union. And they just get their bird dog fee. Um, almost as if like, here, we're going to let you use their money, but we're going to like, you know, collect a uh, referral bonus for that, which mm-hmm. could be $1,000. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's that's a big mistake I made. So anyways, that's why I'm led to think that Carvana is making a lot of this from financing too. So would you go back and finance, like if you could do it again, <laughs> would you save money financing? I think the numbers would make sense too if I could pay it off in six months. I think at the time... I was. I feel like that's the tricky part, though. Like, can you actually pay it off? Can you make? I'm sure if we made a spreadsheet and we calculated. To tell you the truth, like I think Dave Ramsey would say it's not worth that. Okay, so I think doesn't Dave Ramsey also say if you have the money, it's okay to finance? Um, I don't know about. I don't really watch him too too much, but yeah, I would say I probably watch him the most. I'd say, which honestly, for our goals, he's not very parallel to our goals. I would say that right now, he's big on temptation and he's big on. Why would you welcome debt into your life when you could have avoided it? Okay. So for him, like he's borderline not. He's almost, I'd say, in my opinion, he's almost against mortgages. Well, he he's against thirty year mortgages. Yeah, I think he's always like, all right, if you're gonna do it, get the cheaper house and go the fifteen. Yeah. Um, but isn't that your primary? That's that's he says that if it's your primary, I think. 
Yeah. Oh, like if that's because his live at? yeah, because his is his I think audience it, is mostly residential people, right? Right. So. I, I and I get his experience. He's been like a financial advisor for like thirty years plus. Yeah. He's listened to so many stories about I've got thirty thousand in credit card debt, I've got thirty thousand in student loans, and I've got thirty thousand in you know whatever behind mm-hmm. rent. Mm-hmm. That he's just at a point where he's like, nope, nobody use a credit card, only use debit because you can't go into debt if you're spending your own money. Yeah. Um, but I think if we did the math, I would fully, I mean, as long as you know that like you're comfortable sitting that $11,000 in a savings account, Mm -hmm. if the math makes sense, the math makes sense. I mean, why not do it? The first six months, even you can deploy that 11,000 into another vehicle, Mm -hmm. like a brokerage (laughs) account and use that for more money to, to add up to the principal you can put down, but throw it, throw it in a 3% dividend stock and get the, the one fourth of the 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 dividend paid out to you, and then just pay off. I don't know. Right, and it's I know a good car insurance rate right now, or my bad, a good um car loan interest rate right now. You're doing good if you can get it down to four percent. Oh, really? It's, okay. Right. So it's not like a house. It's, it's not like no. It's not that low. But um, you know, if you've got if you're buying a car out of your um, what, what what was the interest rate you said that one of, one of my car? coworkers? Uh, so I do have a coworker that does not work for TMC anymore. So we can talk about this all day long. <laughs> um, she her her interest rate was eleven percent, which means for that to make sense, and Aaron back me up on this, but for that to make sense, she better be returning at least twelve percent in stocks, twelve yeah. percent mutual funds or yep. crypto or whatever it is. For you to use, that's so greedy. 11%. Mm-hmm. That's almost like saying... What company do you know at all? Um, that was through Community First, I think. Really? They didn't... They didn't ex- ex- well, the, deal, the dealership, her. I don't know exactly what the dealership was. It the de- was. Did she go through the dealership? Uh, I think she went through the dealership, but they, they put her loan to Community First. Okay. Okay, um, that might be that might be why. The, deal, the dealership... They probably, probably added like, some fluff on there, too. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're but, like, um... Oh, banks banks charge 6% for car loans? They let's, charge, let's charge... Let's charge... Is it really? like if you look right. up right now, like right. average car loan for community first? Do you think you'll see that? No, I think I think it's more like six five percent for. I guess now it's changed, right? Yeah, maybe or even personal loans because you could do a personal loan and right. buy a car with that. Can you? Yeah, I think I think you can. Is would, that a better idea? Uh, it just depends on the interest rate. I mean, like right. <laughs> I mean, like, typically, if you, yeah. If, if you'd be up front with the, the bank, there. What is the interest rate? For a car loan? For a personal loan. For a th- personal loan? Isn't it more? It's probably. I, I think it's. Um, it just, depends it's on like the line of credit. credit for, I think. Thing. If you buy it with a line of credit, I think lines of credit are. Uh, to be honest, it goes I, back I to no hard money. It goes it's, back to hard money versus. Your dad has to come in. Maybe. Yeah, we yeah. definitely should bring him on here. I don't want to say something wrong, but. <laughs> he's, he's listening to the podcast. This is all wrong. <laughs> this is all wrong. What am I listening yeah. to? Uh, That's funny. Yeah, I think. Um, if you're buying, the bottom line is, if you're buying a car out of what you can afford, and by that I mean if you're, I would say in my opinion, if your car's total value is over half of your yearly salary, take-home salary, <laughs> I think you're probably overspending on a car if you're borrowing on that car. And when you've got people buying cars that are an entire year salary or even two years salary, that just doesn't make sense. And that's where you end up with an 11, 12, 13, 14% interest rate when they're putting, you know, a thousand dollars down on the vehicle. And by the way, now they have to have full coverage for insurance. They've got to pay premiums for everything. How, have you seen the, 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 the TikToks where it's like the car salesman having to talk to the, the, the people? They have terrible credit trying to get a car. Yes, I've seen like, some stuff like uh, that. Can your mom co-sign, please? <laughs> can we? Any chance we could? Uh, we could approve you for a five thousand dollar loan, but the rest of it, we're gonna need a co-sign. Uh, we're Acqu- gonna get you into a car today, not the one you want, though. <laughs> according according to Google, the the average um, line of credit is like nine. The lowest is nine percent. That's an average. So I mean, like now, the first thing I see when I type in a line of credit is like one point. <laughs> yeah, add of one point nine five percent. That's a HELOC. Oh What's a HELOC? God. Home equity line of credit. Boom! Oh wow! Come on, so John. You gotta know very terms. knowledgeable. It's basically basically a loan against your house. You're basically putting up your house as collateral if you don't pay your. That's what I'll be doing when I start my expediting business. <laughs> just buy another rental with that HELOC. <laughs> so it's you're just using your house as collateral, or you're yeah. actually borrowing against the balance of your house. 
Uh, actually, it's bar- probably bar- borrowing against the okay, balance. Okay, so that like, that seems is it? theoretically, right. if you defaulted on the loan, you have now lost your house. Yeah. Sort okay. Of, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. They're gonna Wait. foreclose on that shit, and yeah. then yeah, yeah. So it's you know, well, it's, it's, yeah. it's all all the risk. It's like a high end pawn shop. <laughs> <laughs> you get a loan but for a thousand dollars. A lot of people you keep your car. A lot of a lot of real estate investors have HELOCs, like just sitting in the bank, ready to pull up. Like, yeah. yeah. Thank you.